Thank you for having me. Thank you for that extensive uh, biography. You are. You're a musical encyclopedia. Your Twitter is unbelievable. Top fives, top five albums. They nice. never get anything, my top fives and top tens. It's the most vain and self-indulgent thing to publish lists of bands that a lot of, a lot of people don't know about just for the purely imaginary kudos that that's bringing me in some music-loving community. But that's my right to use my social media for whatever dead ends that I choose. Mm. And if just one person listens to LaRue's criminally underrated second album, Trouble in Paradise, off the back of my steer, then, uh, you know, that's the Lord's work as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Ivo, it's great to see you. Um, lovely to have you with us. Last time I saw you, we were dashing for a train, I remember. It, uh, was, uh, it was not a meaningful interaction. Our eyes were on the train. Yeah, they were. I've got a very simple question to start for you, which uh, hopefully will have a, a, a less than simple answer, I'm sure, which is what makes someone funny? Oh, dear. Um... I mean, there's not an answer to that. It's a real hospital pass of an opening question. Uh, um, because uh, it's a hugely subjective art form. Uh, well, it's not an art form. It's, it's just a, a subjective quality. Um, uh, I think that, I think it can be measured, obviously, externally, uh, by how many lols you're getting but I think it's important to keep faith in the possibility that you or the things you think or say might be funny, even if they're not smashing it out of the park in any real world scenarios. Mm -hmm. That's certainly what I was doing when I was, when I was at Eton, I think, was sort of really enjoying watching comedy, believing that I you know, might also be able to write or even perform a joke at some point, but knowing that my experiments with it thus far had not been a great success. Do you know what I mean? It, you sort of think it, 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 just because you're not being, you know, you're not being funny in a particular moment or space doesn't mean uh, that you are, you know, that, that it's going to elude you for, forever. I am. And, um, I guess it's just, I guess it's just about being plugged into your, your surroundings and, and, um, being able to pick up on pick up on on sort of vibes really does that make sense i mean the last time i not the last time but one of the earliest times i saw you post you know a you know the post ivo graham everywhere was at really? a 21st and i rushed up to you and asked you to tell me a joke and i think your reaction was similar to the reaction you just gave henry's question <laughs> just painful um, well only because i know i'm going to be so boring about it you but, know really I, I should have a funny answer prepared for the question what makes someone funny well, and then that would kill two birds with one stone i'd be educating and entertaining i mean the the first memory of our friendship was was playing bubble trouble with you and jack willoughby age 13 and <laughs> remember that it, that sounds like a sentence made up by someone who hates posh people <laughs> just, <laughs> deutsche bank is full of people who just spent their teenage years playing bubble trouble with willoughby um, but uh, it's a real game, and he was a real guy. Yeah, uh, there he is. I, I hope he's listening. I went into education. You kicked on and became a TV star. Tell us how that happened. Uh, well, you're very generous, and you were very generous in, in the sort of bio bit to say TV star, to say Ivo Graham everywhere, to say uh, Mock the Week regular. I would argue that all of those things are, are not true. Um, I've been on Mock the Week twice. Uh, there are many, many things that I've not got anywhere near. And TV comedy doesn't really exist anymore. It's on pause, just like everything else. So it hardly feels like um, uh, I'm all, if anything, my, my professional future feels more uncertain than it ever has. But uh, it has been a nice busy last few years and I'm very grateful for that. And um, I think it came about because I started doing comedy at a place where there were lots of opportunities at university. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it, but there wasn't any pressure on it because it wasn't my job. Um, but because I then went to the Edinburgh Fringe and uh, that's obviously an incredible place for any young actor or performer to go and watch stuff and try stuff out. That meant that I made a few more contacts and then by the end of university, it was an actual job option. Um, so uh, I feel that, you know, I've worked hard and tried to take any opportunities that I've got, but there's been a lot of 
you know, being in the right place at the right time and starting stuff, you know, at, at appropriate phases in my life. And then there were maybe three years or so in London when I was slightly treading water and living, you know, with family members and, you know, doing gigs, but not that much. Uh, and again, it was maybe just a bit of patience and persistence that meant that then a few more things started happening where maybe if I'd been a bit older or a bit more cowardly or had had my head turned by a law conversion, then I would have just, uh, you know, just dismissed it as a lovely hobby for a few years. But, um, but the head was not turned. So my head, well, I don't think the law conversions have any interest now. I think... Uh, I think it's literally too late. I think the most terrifying thing about my career as it stands is that uh, it's increasingly the, the only option. Um, and at the moment it's viable, but we'll see how long it lasts. It I, no, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm mainly trying to remember what, what, uh, how Bubble Trouble worked. That's, that's it was such that. a slave to the nostalgia of it that I'll probably end up playing it online after the end of this chat. It was a sort of, I'm gonna use a Pokemon, the sort of Charmeleon to the Charizard of, of uh of uh, of uh, Pokemon Go, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I guess so. It's great that we're describing uh, sort of bubble trouble using the metaphor of Pokemon in a real indictment of how no one ever really grows up. <laughs> um, uh, how are you guys doing anyway? How's how's uh, how's your lockdown? How how are these sort of chats and shows going? We're we're having a great time. We have this lovely group of kids who seem to enjoy listening from people listening to people like you and I think are just like quite inspired by real careers and real professions whether they're beautiful or ugly or difficult or easy and, and usually probably the harder things there a question that I know lots of people will be interested in there'll be kids out there who are fanatical about performing or perhaps aren't fanatical about performing but would love to perform mm. scary enough to go on stage for the school play you've been on the I'm, I'm sitting 500 yards from the Apollo, which is just next door. Oh, wow. Lovely stuff. I thought you were going to say 500 yards from the Farrah Theatre or something. <laughs> no, I don't live in Eton anymore. <laughs> as, as, as cushy as that would be, I'm not a key worker. Um, but uh, I'm sitting near the Apollo, and you've been on stage there, in the lights, thousands of people with their arms crossed looking grumpy. Is mm. it scary? How do you deal with that? What's your, what's your coping mechanism? Well, it is scary, and the, the Apollo is very scary because it was the biggest gig of my career, and... Uh, they actually messed up the tech. So I had to come out from under the, this, the sign with all the sort of smoke twice because the first time there was a bit of an issue with the filming. So you've, you've, you've got the adrenaline coursing through your veins and then someone comes on stage and says, sorry, you're going to have to do that again, which makes you look even more of a wally than, than you did before. But I think I just, you know, I had had a lot of run, run ups at it because I'd started off doing very small gigs and I had you know, honed my material over and over again, which is one of the fun things about doing stand-up. You don't have to change it up every time. And slowly I'd started to do things which scared me, you know, more and more. But actually they'd start, they'd sort of, you know, it also started to scare me less and less because I was just getting more used to that. And I think that's probably the most, well, one of the more important things to remember about uh, taking on something which appears quite sort of scary, like stand-up comedy is that you know you you shouldn't jump in your sort of fearful mind to the sort of you know greatest extreme of it like how on earth would I ever stand in front of you know a thousand or even a hundred people um because like everything else you just work your way up to it and of course I couldn't have done a gig like that you know after starting out but I've been going for about eight years by that point and um and it's a very forgiving community and you just start to really enjoy, you know, being on stage. I was never confident about that sort of thing at school. I wasn't an actor, um, but uh, it's amazing how quickly you settle into it. Cause I would have characterized myself as quite a shy person before. And certainly a lot of my friends from school were very surprised that, that I was doing it. But now the thing that is quite intimidating to a lot of people like doing stand-up comedy is to me, you know, very, you know, very natural, which is not to say that it always goes well, but it's been a real lesson for me in how quickly something that's quite scary can really become quite sort of natural. I mean, you, you, uh, you weren't shy on the, uh, on the old bubble trouble, but um, you were like, of course, we all come out of our shells on bubble trouble. I'll move away from that. It's a, it's a boring narrative for everyone else. Apart well, from before, me. You, before you do, we've had a comment on the thread, which I don't think Walter's seen, which is that Noah out there says, 
Just so you know, they turn Bubble Trouble into a times table game on Manga High. Bad face. <laughs> so, kids, kids do get us. We're not that old. Okay. Well, well, no. I, I mean, I, me and Noah go a long way back anyway. So you, you we're, we're in tune. I mean, your your relative shyness um, comes out in your comedy, or certainly did when you started. Similarly, so your education. Um, I won't read out the, the joke that was featured in the top 10, but I will plug it and you can see it online if you just Google it. Oh, but, give, uh, th let's do a joke, surely. I've been boring enough. I think, you know, if we've got a one line at a hand. Well, the joke is, and I won't do it any justice, but I've got an Eastern themed advent calendar where all the doors are opened by my dad's friends. I think you've done a superb job there, Walter. I mean, it's very hard to smash it on a three way Zoom gig. But <laughs> yeah, and that, that's, I would do that every night after it as well, just to really show people where. Uh, the, the punchline comes. Is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, I mean, you, you talk about Eton and Oxford a lot about a lot a lot in your comedy. Is that deliberate? And a sort of more serious question is, um, being privately educated in comedy is um, difficult. Have you found it difficult? No. Um, I think that uh, it gives you a lot of advantages, and a few people have uh issues with it but it just makes you sort of work harder i think to be liked and respected and to be honest to a lot of people it's quite intriguing i think you know eton and oxford uh are sort of quite you know mythical places particularly eton you know that's where the whole hogwarts fascination comes from so i think you can play up being this slightly otherworldly repressed boarding school loser from the 1900s and it's actually quite a good character to have rather than just you know another you know, middle-aged white guy. Which of course is, is fair because, you know, it was the 1990s and 2000s, not the 1900s, right? Yeah, but you're just smushing them all together, Henry. You know, you're, 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 you're playing on some occasionally very lazy stereotypes, but you've got to get the job done. Yeah, which you do. You do very comfortably. So I guess if there are kids out there who think they're funny or, or don't think that, don't know or don't think they're funny yet, what would be your advice for how to like, put those wheels in action and, and, and kind of set a comedy career, be it amateur or professional in motion? Well, I would say don't be intimidated by uh, being in a um, sort of setting where maybe there aren't a lot of opportunities because sometimes you've just got to wait that out, I think. Um, but equally, you know, watching as much as you can, getting a sense of what you like, digging deeper, using things like YouTube to go down little rabbit holes is, uh, and, and really seek out stuff that you like. I mean, you know, uh, is, is a great way to educate yourself. And then maybe, you know, writing before you perform uh, is, qu is quite good. But then even that feels quite old fashioned now because obviously we, you know, in, in the world of, and I'm gonna sound a million years old, uh, YouTube and uh, TikTok, uh, you can just whack stuff up online straight away. So there are some people who've got that creativity. If you've got the creativity in the tech, maybe just start putting stuff out there. I think because I'm a bit more tentative and because that didn't really exist when I was starting out 10, 12 years ago, I would have waited a bit longer, but there's, a, you know, and, and I think if you let an idea mull, that's quite good. But basically there's, there's no right way to do it. And actually if you, if you start putting stuff out there and trying it on your friends or whatever, then you'll get a quicker sense of what works and then you can start to chip away at it. You are a uh, father. Yes, I am. I've got a 14 month old daughter. So relatively new, I said in my, in my bio. So yeah, for, I, think that's, I think I'm in the relatively new phase. She's not a baby. That's the scariest thing. She's walking. She is, she's tentatively walking. No, she's not. She's walking along holding things. She's cruising, to use the technical term. Um, um, but she can't stand unsupported. What's the advice? for parents out there? I, I, listen, I've got no advice for parents. I, I would say I'm an unconvincing uh, giver of advice to aspiring comedians. And even though I think I am a solid dad and I'm going to be a, uh, you know, great moral, mm. uh, you know, and uh, sort of educational presence going forward, I have been making up as I go along. I, I read a couple of books. I took a couple of tips from other new fathers, but really, you forget all of that theory because it's just a series of day-to-day, -day, often quite uh, exhausting and um, at times really quite traumatic experiences. And, uh, and you, just, you just sort of, you, you learn to juggle lots of things at the same time. And you're also 
buffeted by all these emotions, which, to be honest, are such cliches, but you don't really appreciate them till you become a dad. It is absolutely amazing, but it's not really a roller coaster you can sort of do on a, on a simulator beforehand. You've just got to be in it. Nice. Well, we're going to take some questions from the audience. They are, they are baying for your blood. They are, <laughs> they are desperate to ask questions. 26 things in the Q&A. Why can't they use PSVR? Oh, that's, that's before I've come on. He's muted. Uh, there's lots of questions. How do you get into comedy? It's mostly is, about bubble trouble. Is it lots of bubble trouble stuff? Is it taught? Can you be, yeah. Favorite comedian? Who is your favorite comedian? That's a good question. Um, I like the comedian um, Dylan Moran, the Irish guy from Black Books. Um, uh, is great. I also like James Acaster. Um, who I'm, you know, sort of friends with, so it feels embarrassing to be a fan, but uh, I think he's great. Um, and uh, that'll do. I mean, there are lots of comedians. I also like... Uh... No, there's two. I, okay. I mustn't get lost in this. Is there a way that comedy is, like, changing at the moment? Is there, is there a sort of shift? or is It's it... all going online. So that's... Um, um, it's, uh, you know, particularly at the moment, because there are no gigs and will not be any gigs probably until 2021. Um, but uh, it's certainly good. And I already feel quite ancient in this respect. If you do, if you are good at making content at home, and there are lots of people who are becoming like massive TV stars, just having started out doing stuff on like Instagram live and stuff. Yeah. So I uh, find that quite intimidating because I like the thought of, you know, preparing something on my own for ages and then sort of you know writing a long novel or something whereas actually it's more about being really good on social media i'm going to ask i have a question which is a, a self-absorbed question i'm also going to take milo's question which combines my thing he says uh is it you on the voiceover for flea subscription itch i absolutely am the voice of <laughs> flea treatment itch i'm so proud and i'm delighted that it's come up i'm delighted that the advert is punching through I got into comedy with a few aims when I was 18 years old. And I'd say the main one was to provide my voice to a new campaign for the swift and efficient dealing of, you know, your dog or cat having fleas. <laughs> Sign up now and get your first month free. Plugging itch. Very good. My question uh, is, is obsolete now. It's, it's, you can't follow that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to do a quick fire round to finish. And then we're going to play the game of Biscuit Face, which is yep. classic. So, uh, ginger nut or, or whatever, digestive with the ready. I've got a chocolate digestive right in front of me. So the program notes went out, perfect. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, you we are a, a well-oiled machine, this. Um, so uh, I'm gonna just ask you five questions. It's gonna be, uh, part one will be uh, quick fire. The second round will be complete the sentence. So favorite TV show at the moment? Um, I, I watched the first episode of Normal People last night and I thought that was great. Uh, I've also been watching Ozark on Netflix and enjoying that. Yeah, isn't, isn't Connell a good man? Oh. Um, He's a good man, but he also uh, disrespects Marianne on multiple occasions. I'm halfway through, so... But no. we're all flawed, you know, we're all deeply flawed. Who amongst us hasn't disrespected... McIntyre uh, or Dara O'Brien? Who, who was the first one? Michael McIntyre. Both, uh, both fantastic comedians, but I would probably say Dara O'Brien for his forensic scientific approach. <laughs> you love your music? Yes. Uh, favorite band or slash or most played song on a popular music system? Um, I like uh, the melancholic American indie band, The National, uh, yes. because uh, I am ooh, an old man in a middle-aged man's body. Um, and they're just superbly depressing. But I'm also into more fun pop stuff, such as the new Dua Lipa album and the excellent melodrama by Lord. I also like some rap. I vote. I, uh, I have to jump in there. I, I listened to The National while having my wisdom teeth removed recently. Oh, that's the perfect time. It's so wisdom useful. teeth removal or a divorce. Those are the big two for a, a national deep dive. I would say for your largely sort of teen and preteen audience, it's a bit soon for the national, um, <laughs> but, uh, but Lord's Melodrama, fantastic. Two more questions. Uh, complete the sentence. The best thing I learned at Oxford was? Um, the best thing I learned at Oxford was, and I'm not proud of this answer, um, how to write an essay about a book without having written that book. Perfect. I regret that, but it was a technique that got me through a few sticky weeks. 
And I think it's quite an important life skill. It is, but I don't actually advocate bluffing um, in the main because it's good to have a solid base of knowledge from which to, to operate and you will get found out. Very good, exactly. So remember that, students listening. And finally, to complete this absolutely hilarious section of the interview, if I wasn't a comedian, I'd be... Um, I'd probably be working for uh, in some sort of insurance or risk management, like my father, who I respect. He was a very funny man, but he keeps his humour separate from his work, which I think actually might be the right way to live your life. Fantastic. Well, I vote. Now's the time for Biscuit Face. Uh, so reach for, <laughs> reach, for, reach for the chocolate digestive. I've just got the plain original of Biscuit's one. I'm okay. going to officiate. Um, Henry, do we have the leaderboard? Yeah, we do have the leaderboard. I'll show you the leaderboard. The leaderboard, you see, you're down the bottom of the leaderboard with nothing. There's actually only a couple of our guests that have actually made this. You only get. Why didn't Laura Lambert play? Yeah, Laura Lambert. She's famous these days, didn't you hear? She is, listen, she's one of the best journalists in the country, and she didn't yeah. play Biscuit Face. Yeah, she played Biscuit Face. No, she she played. She just didn't. She has ah, a small face. Okay, well, I, 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 I suppose I should wait until I know what the rules are before I start judging my competitors. Well, will it be if you're out there? Play along with us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, so we've got a timer. Everyone, go to the kitchen, get your biscuit face. Remember, tag us or whatever you want to do on Instagram. Um, let's have a go. All right. We haven't given out many packets of biscuits yet, so we need some more. Uh, we need some more winners, please. So send us your videos. All right. Either on the face, no touching, to the mouth. You're going to find that digestive tricky, but we'll see how you manage it. Thirty seconds starts now. What am I doing? <laughs> Just eating it. <laughs> Uh, what, what's the game? What? What's the game? Get it I'm in gonna... your mouth. Get it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite humiliating, actually. <laughs> right. We can see what the problem is, which is I'm 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 kicking up too much speed at the top. <laughs> I've lost it. Oh, you've both lost. A terrible performance. It's a tough Am game. I going to get a line like Constantine Aludis and Laura Yeah, yeah you're, you're going to get a line right now like Laura and Constantine. And I've humiliated myself on the greatest stage of all. I'm so sorry. That's kind of the point. You see what we did there? Mm. Yeah, it's very good. I give a load yeah. of pompous answers. And then I... But just, just remember, children at home feel a lot funnier and more talented than you at this point. So. That's great stuff. I aim to please. Um, I, I've, I've greatly enjoyed this, guys. I get to eat the biscuit, which was my main concern. And, um, and I wish you all the very best with uh, the continued uh, interviewing endeavours. Thank, Thank you. you. We're just Please trying to keep up. IRL if this is all over. Goodbye. Bye.